Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Annette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, coming in with this week's Love and Marriage, Huntsville. Mm -hmm. I apologize, I don't even know the title of this episode, but y'all will know it because it will be in the title. Yeah. Go ahead and rate this video while you're at it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so. Y'all keep coming back every week. We look at the analytics. We see that y'all keep coming back, but you, but you ain't subscribed. Yeah. Just go ahead and do it. And then that way, you'll get privileges like we'll get a little notification when we come through <laughs> and whatnot. But we're going to go ahead and knock this out real quick. This Let's do the, it. The privilege of working from home is that you can do skit like this on your lunch break. Exactly. So we definitely ain't going to be on here long. But I don't know what the title is, like I said, but I believe that the title should have been something to the effect of everybody marriage is having a challenge because no. people aren't feeling appreciated. So we're going to start off with the conversation that Marceau and Maurice had, right? And Marceau and Maurice met up to have a good little time and to shoot some pool and whatnot and have a little chatty chat, brother chat chat. And uh, Marceau told his brother, listen, I feel like me and Tisha aren't on the same team anymore. Like ever since she mm. got her podcast, everything is about the podcast, podcast, podcast. But we have some great things that are happen happening for sure. And she just kind of be like, oh, okay. You know, and he's like, I'm ready to celebrate. And I'm like, yeah, 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 we did that. And she's on there just, oh, yeah. oh bless you, all Excuse things. Me. Mommy business. Yeah. Now, what I have to say about that is I, I kind of, I see it both ways. Yeah. Mommy business is so new and fresh for her. So that's her newborn baby. Yeah. Have you ever seen a new parent? Like mm -hmm. all of y'all on that got Spend kids. Spend a lot of time with it. Yeah. And it's not that yeah. you don't love your other babies. It is not that you're not nurturing your other kids, but this baby is so new and fresh and it's fragile and it's what's happening right now. And it's yeah. getting all of your attention. So yeah. I kind of, I, I see it both ways, but I do feel like Tisha should have been a little bit more like, yay, because at the end of the day, that's y'all smitty. Yeah. You know, and it could be a matter of perception, too. Yeah. We're and, you know, he went back to the five-year plan, and he was like, you know, I don't want to go back to the drawing table and come up with another five-year plan just to get five years down the road, and it changes again. And that made me think it's like, that's the one of the cons of marriages. You can set a plan. And then life just come along and just can life change, happens. can change that. And unfortunately, there is no manual in life to show you how to navigate that. You just have to feel your way sure. and find out what works to get you past that. So uh, I hope y'all get past that one, Marcel. Yeah. And the thing about marriage is, like you said, you can have a plan and you can be like, this is what's going to happen. It may take five years. Right. That five years could take six, seven years. Mm -hmm. You always have to have some room for adjustment. Yeah. And... You can't be like, nope, it's not at five years mm -hmm. now. Five years, we got switch gears. It, it just doesn't work like that. Yeah, have, a, so, have room for contingencies. So now we're over in another household <laughs> where somebody else don't feel like they're being appreciated. And we have uh, Martel. And Martel has been doing all of the duties of a father to all of the kids while Mel is out, you know, doing her thing. And she's been, um, she, you know, she got that role in the play and whatnot. And she comes home and Martell is like, so you came home empty handed. You didn't even <laughs> bring, bring no food. Up. That's a matter of communication. Yeah. Because right. in her mind, she probably was like, oh, you got this. You didn't ask me to bring it. And it's not that you have to ask, but you have to communicate. Exactly. It's not like you just be like, oh, but, but. Yeah, because you, know? you don't magically think of everything in a marriage. Yeah. You know? And then like <laughs> she said on the couch, she was like, but you don't even like takeout like that. You like for me to come home and cook. So, whatever. So, Martell is sitting there and he was like, the reason I'm down here sick, I can't talk, is because well, I'm just I'm doing, running doing myself ragged. Doing all this stuff by myself. Welcome to a woman's world. Real talk. But it kind of go back to you like... But like, it's a balancing act. Like we talk about, you know, with us, is like whatever needs to be done at the time to pivot. keep things moving, you got to pivot to do that. So, yeah. that's where they are. And I mean, Mel is too. doing Mel is doing way too much. She is. For somebody <laughs> that just much. had a baby. And I'm not yeah. saying she's doing too much for the marriage sake. For your health. You yeah. have a newborn and that body ain't healed. I had a freaking surgery in February. My doctor even told me, your body is still going to heal within 12 months. Right. You feel okay, but your body is still changing exactly. every day. And it does not it's a 12-month process. He said, I don't care what they tell you. You can go on with your regular life. But when you um, if you have to check in somewhere yep. and they want to know when your recent um, surgeries were, 
that's why they want to know. Yeah, and then too, you know, I don't know what to believe sometimes on the show. Yeah, but right. it's almost like they're getting ready to go down the same path with Saint Martel cheating in the first place, because he mm. said Mel wasn't there being the wife that she should be, and apparently that's hap that she think that's happening now. So is that late? Was he laying the pavement? Yeah, so for, for what's happening right now in the if present. If you don't, like, it's a threat. Like, if you're mm -hmm. not going to shape up, I go. Yeah, I'm a, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah. we have Kimmy <laughs> and Maurice. Um, and I love me some Kimmy, but Kimmy look like she, I told y'all earlier on, the Scots, when I talk about the Scots, I'm talking about Kimmy and Maurice. They look like they're over this show. Yeah. It's Kimmy especially. <laughs> but um, she's having a conversation with Maurice's sister. Millie. With Millie. Millie looks so pretty. And Millie was like, so when you gonna quit your job? She said, so I'm, I'm sitting I'm here. I'm like with your brother. Is doing the same. Are you Maurice Jr. <laughs> yeah. or what? And I love what Kimmy said. Kimmy was like, what you and your brother has done is something that was birthed out of an idea or a mm -hmm. vision that you all had. And I think that you all have birthed that baby and it's great. I don't want any parts of that, but mm -hmm. I do want something that we, we can, yeah. you know, be a thinker of and that we can bring it to fruition. But this right here, this is not what it's going to be. Yeah. And even um, Marcel was like, bringing your wife and your sister, don't. Mm -mm. Yeah, they could clash because she used to doing things a certain way for years. And then your wife will come in and change and she all that. To have her yeah. way with certain <laughs> things. And it's and then at Thanksgiving, y'all gonna be having turkey legs flying because yep. all of that's just pent up. All over something that happened at Credit One. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody gonna have to come get yeah. both y'all out of jail. Yeah, we ain't about that. Yeah, we don't we don't want that to happen to y'all, man. Nah. So I didn't know that the the marriage thing like that was Tisha was talking about on the last episode was going to be a part of a live podcast thing. Yeah. So that is going on. And at first she didn't even think that Marceau was going to make it, but he ended up making it. I knew my boy was going to show course. up. He always do that. He uh, always late. <laughs> uh, he just want us to talk yeah. about him a little bit. Yeah, exactly. But he showed up and the panel was interesting. And there were questions that I was like, I don't know if y'all are answering this thing <laughs> truthfully because real talk, like some of the questions were, is infidelity a deal breaker? Now for women, we'd be like, no, but you know, a lot of times women do give in and they do forgive at least once, twice or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? And like you said, you never know what you're going to do until you're until, in that situation. Until the situation is exactly. Like. Hopefully none of us don't mm -mm, don't have to deal with that. But here go the men. You know, it's a deal breaker, but it's circumstantial. <laughs> and so Dark sitting up there talking about, so, well, uh, if we're like on a trip to yeah, Puerto, Puerto Rico, Rico and something just happened, <laughs> you know, I, I think I can forgive that. But uh, if it's one of my boys here in the city, I, I'm not going to I got I got to go to work with it. I got to go to church <laughs> with it. <laughs> I felt them though. I felt them on that though. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. No. It makes it harder to move past it because. Let me interpret. They always going to put it up in your face. Let me interpret. Yeah. So Dar said when y'all go to Puerto Rico, he want to have a threesome or a swinging <laughs> session. Because that don't count. But how you get that out of cheating? Just threesomes is not cheating. Well, it's not. That's, that's an arranged, you know, y'all be like, y'all agreed to, okay. to bump bellies together. <laughs> you bump them on the balance. <laughs> but uh, pretty much the dog said, we go to Puerto Rico and some skit happen. I'm going to forgive you just like I'm going to need you to forgive me. Because if your A is an L, my back will be an L too. I'm going to say it like this. On the surface, yes, cheating is a deal breaker. Yeah. But a new deal can be made based upon what the circumstance was. Possible deal. And that's what Maurice was saying. Maurice yeah. was like, it's... It's a deal breaker, but it depends on what the circumstance is. Like, if yeah. you make a mistake and it's just something like, dang, I made a freaking mistake. Mm -hmm. But I was like, Kim, and she, <laughs> ain't no mistakes here, bitch. Let's say, ain't let's no say mistake. cheating ain't a mistake. <laughs> and she was like, one of the reasons that I married you was because we were so strongly convinced that that is, that, that's the breaker. Mm -hmm. I was like, child, but like we said, marriage everything changes yeah, yeah it changes and it all shifts right. and moves and all of that good yeah. stuff so but anything know. in life you really don't know what you're gonna yeah. do until you get in a circumstance you don't know mm -mm. you really don't so mel 
was at this event. So um, Tisha had invited her and she ended up coming. She was shady as hell the whole time. Her and um, Destiny sat up there rolling their eyes and mm -hmm. was like, mm, I don't know what to take from this. And, you know, there was one question where they asked, um, do you think that only God gives the man the vision for the household? And of course, you could tell who was really chauvinistic in this moment because Oh, I think that God and, and the women got to follow us. <laughs> so one lady was like, uh, so what about single moms? About single moms? Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. My husband used to say this all the time at our last church that we was at. And there was a lot of people that used to like submission, submission. Mm -hmm. Women need to submit. And one day my husband spoke up and he said, women don't have a submission problem. They have a problem with you. Right. If they don't trust you mm -hmm. and you're a man that doesn't have a plan, a vision, right. or a clear path that you are running your family into, why are they going to follow you yeah. into a ditch? Right. Where where are they following us Where are we going? To? Because yeah. women love a, a strong leader. Right. That's why a whole lot of women go to church. Mm -hmm. They find that strong leadership in someone that they have their full hope and trust in, and it's usually their pastor. So women don't have a submission problem. They have a problem with you. Right. So get your skit together. And then men have to also be fragile enough. We have a level of submission too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because you may have a vision, but I have a piece of this puzzle. Matter of fact, I have probably most of the puzzle so yeah. that this thing can come together. But if you're fighting against me just because you want all of the ideas to be your own, yeah. We're not going nowhere. We're not going nowhere fast. And let's give them an example to, to kind of make it all, all all come together. Let's just What's say that. Let's just say you have a the I have a financial goal for our household. Mm -hmm. I I don't expect for God to give me all the answers because I'm not in this thing by myself. It's us. And so sometimes God will put something on her heart that's a part of the vision. But if I'm a sovereignistic male, be like. Nah, since the I didn't didn't come through me, we ain't doing it. We ain't doing it. Even though it's a good idea that falls in line with the financial goal, if if you let your ego or your pride get in the way, you guys, you know, you would never reach a goal. At all. Period. Yeah. So yeah. So we gotta give y'all something to submit to. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> so we got along with um everything. And I think the podcast went Pretty well. I was well. I was concerned about it, but I like that they had viewpoints from everyone. I wish I could have seen the whole thing. Well, you probably can. Mommy business. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm going to check it out. Check it out. Listen see the, to it. Listen, because you know they pulled it, parts they want out of it. So then it got real weird real fast because, you know, Messy Wanda was there. And I love me some Miss Wanda, but Miss Wanda is about to get cussed out. <laughs> there isn't but so much. I'm going to respect my elder. That's your mama. So I'm not going to right. give her what I would give a uh, female in the street. I'll go ahead and call a hoe in the street. Um, she rose up on Kimmy and Mel having a conversation and she, I need to speak to Mel. So here because we go. you over here at this event and you kicked my no. daughter out of I your admit. event. So why are you here? I said, Melody, this is the time for you to cuss her out. I ain't even gonna lie. Now, <laughs> you know we don't agree <laughs> with all that was going on, but this is your opportunity to cuss her out. Yeah. And I yeah, love Ron, Ms. Ron, Ms. Ward, and I love she, Tish. I love like, everybody on the show. Yeah, real talk. yeah right. Except I'm for like, Martell. And I'm like, I like him. I'm like, why, why would you do that at her event? Why would she even try Let's to see. Yeah, start controversy when you know this could go like way left. But you know, I do give it a mail that she she she, she walked it. away before she disrespected her. So I I do give her that, even though you were shady the whole time, like you said. But yeah, that could have that could have went wrong bad for Tish. Oh yeah, yeah. And it ain't but so much Tish. You can get your mom in check because she gonna wreck a whole lot of stuff, and yeah. then it's gonna come to a point where when people see your mama, they not gonna wanna deal with you. Yeah. Because they know that if any inkling of y'all having a disagreement or things not working right, then they got to deal with your mama too. And nobody needs a pit bull. Yeah. So now we're going to go on to... But it kind of go back to like you said, Tish really needs to confront her mama. Yeah. About she don't have to be disrespectful. But, but I tell mama, this. Tell mama, I can handle my own business and if I need your input, I will solicit you for that at that time. So then we have... um um da -da 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 -da. Tish and Kimmy. Kimmy. Now, awkward. It was the most awkward thing. Was and, was, awkward. and speaking of pit bulls, <laughs> I felt like Tish wanted Kimmy to become her pit bull whenever they were in a time of battle. Hmm. And like Kimmy said, first of all, 
I wasn't even present for 90% 90 of the this. stuff yeah. that y'all are beefing about. And y'all clearly told me to stay the buck out. Right. So you don't get to tell me when it is that you want give me, me a want, sign so yeah, I can jump in the ring. And defend I'm you. staying mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. And she was like, but did it? And then Kimmy even told her too, you're not innocent in all of this. Yeah. You throw jabs just as well as mm -hmm. she's thrown jabs exactly. about the marriage and things like that. Exactly. You may not think what you said was as hurtful as what she said to you. But you said some things too. Yep. So no, you don't need me. And I'm not, pretty much what she was saying in DMV language, I'm not here to fight your freaking battles. Right. Now I'm not going to see you get jumped, but, but I'm not going to sit here and get war, um, start a war on your behalf because there's two sides to every freaking story. Exactly. And, and that's so, what I love about Kimmy. It's yeah. like, she's so, she is she's so balanced. real. Yeah, she is so real. She's not going to let you pull, pull her into bullshit and take you side just because you're my sister-in-law or you're a family. Because a lot of people do struggle with that. I, I admit, I struggle with that sometimes. I used to. <laughs> especially in your clubbing days, like you would go out with your yeah. um, family and friends. And I don't been in one too many altercations mm -hmm. based off some skit that I ain't had nothing, nothing to do, to do with. with. Yep. But because that we all together, now you got a whole bunch of people ready to roll up on you. And now, of course, you roll. We gonna have to do what we got to do. Yeah. But that was something that could have been avoided because now I'm in your skit just because we in close contact. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's, it's a delicate balance. Yeah. But this, just like you said, just because we found it don't mean but, that I'm going to fight your this, battles. But this is true. Some people do bull skit because they know that people in their corners are going to have their back whether they right or wrong. And that's wrong. Yeah. Because that's wrong. then you start putting your people, the people that you say you love, right. in compromising positions. You know what I'm saying? And it's usually people that don't have nothing to lose that always do that to people that have something to lose. Yep. So we out, and you start some skit. Now I get to fighting, and I ain't got no job because I'm on the Richmond Times dispatch. Exactly. So you got to choose the right time when you release your pit bulls on people. You got you got to keep them for the right time. You got to have the right kind of pit bulls. You got to have a pit bull that work from um they had their own business. Uh huh. <laughs> they don't have no job. They usually own the system or their own disability or something like that. Because anybody with these good jobs, ain't nobody risking it all for exactly. your fight. Exactly. Nah, man. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla! Holla.